What is up everyone, it is Sajambi and welcome back to another video. It's been a long time coming but they're finally here, so let's go through all of the levels in Chapter 2 of Apirophobia. Now it's been nearly a year and a half since Apirophobia's peak and around 11 months since the game's last update. After plenty of teasers and sneak peeks, the Escape from Reality trailer premiered on the 21st of September, revealing that the new levels could be played the very next day. In total, there are 8 levels to complete, making this the largest single update the game has seen. However, we can still see more in the near future once the Chapter 2 Finale Part 2 is released. There's plenty of variety within these levels, so let's begin with Left Scarred on level 17. Now chapter 2 begins with a cutscene of the Watcher explaining your predicament before you are finally released onto the opening level. This map consists of a facility made up of brown walled corridors and tiled flooring, with everyday objects like tables and chairs littering the hallways and accompanying rooms. Multiple entities can be found for the first time since the Abyss, however only one is an active threat. After featuring in level 16's updated cutscene, it's an official debut for the Watcher, who features heavily in the events of Chapter 2 by giving exposition and clues in this and future levels. The main entity to avoid in level 17 is the Caretaker, which is a fast moving black creature which roams the hallways. If detected, the Caretaker rushes quickly to your position, instantly killing you if it catches up. A trend that has become more common as updates are released is the frequency of original levels, with this being the first example. While the overall liminal side of the backrooms remains, Left Scarred isn't based on or inspired by any specific backrooms level. To escape, you need to perform a number of tasks. First, take a key template and find a picture of a cut key filing yours down to match the picture. Then, use it on the storage door, and if it's correct, the door will open leading you to a code on the pillar ahead of you. Go up a set of stairs on the opposite side of the map to a padlock shutter, and type your code into the padlock to open it up. Traverse one final maze to find the exit and complete the level. We're back in another liminal heavy level, with the large expanse of an abandoned mall the setting for level 18. There is a lot to explore on this level, from the two tiers of the interior to the storefronts and restrooms present throughout the building. Interesting hidden spots include the broken clam doll and the bomb, which can be diffused to earn a badge. Once again, there are two entities on this level, with both bringing major threats. It's a surprise appearance for the Hound, who was previously seen in the abandoned office of level 3. It's blind, but attracted to sound, so it can hear any kind of movement, however it's only attracted to the first player it detects. The second entity is the Hoax, which makes its debut on this level. Many wooded mannequins are scattered throughout the level, but 4 to 5 of them are hoaxes, and move when not observed. Sixth Sense can help you find the ones to watch out for, otherwise, footsteps can be heard when a hoax is closing in. While not explicitly related, Apirophobia Level 18 shares some striking resemblances to Backrooms Level 33, which is an empty shopping mall with most of the stores completely empty or holding low stock. To escape, you need to complete the five Simon Says puzzles which are scattered throughout the map. The puzzle will flash a sequence of 5 buttons, you just need to repeat the sequence to make the puzzle turn green. Once all 5 puzzles are done, a door on the bottom floor will open, allowing you to move on. Now the third level of chapter 2 takes us to an abandoned food mart. It consists of empty shelves, fridges and freezers, with shopping carts strewn across the floor. In addition to this, there's a corridor which leads to a maze of changing rooms, which may remind you of level 1's pool rooms, just with no water and better lighting. There is one entity on this level, and it's a return for the Watcher and his helpful clues. He pops up at the very start of the level, telling you that the way to escape is rather simple. That means there are no hostile entities present for the first time in 7 levels. Once again, this is mostly an original level with its two distinct sections, with its closest comparison being Backrooms level 176 and the self-filling grocery store. To escape, you need to find the exit at the end of the changing rooms. You can find this by going through the open freezer door at the right of the store, which will take you to a small maze. At the end of it will be a small gap, which you may need to walk sideways through to get to the second section. Then, it's a simple process of elimination to get to the end of the maze, but as long as you are making forward progress, then you should eventually find the exit. 
We're back outside for the first time since level 15, with this one set in a small neighbourhood with houses and greenery lining the streets. The level is set at night, making it difficult to see without artificial lighting like your flashlight or the handful of streetlights at the start of the level. You'll be glad to know that there are no entities on this level once again, and it's not a timed level either, so you're free to take as much time as you need to make a correct decision, escape and progress. This is the first level in the chapter which can be accurately tied to an official Backrooms level. That comes in the form of Backrooms level 9 and the darkened suburbs. It's described as an infinite suburban area with houses varying in design and size. To escape, you simply need to select and go through the correct house. At the beginning of the level, streetlights light up and go out in the form of a path, leading you to an unlocked house that's next to the final streetlight to go out. Once they stop turning on, go to the closest house and interact with the door to progress. We stay under the cover of darkness once again for this one, with the graveyard being one of the most teased levels in the new update. Level 21 is set in a large graveyard with roads through the centre and around the perimeter, with the entire map surrounded by a dense forest. The main set piece of the map is the cathedral, which looks pretty run down, with much of the interior either messy or damaged. There is one entity on this level, and it's a first appearance for the Keeper, who is a tall, three-legged monster that roams the grounds of the graveyard. It's one of the more aggressive creatures in the game, and will continue to chase a detected player until they die or the level is completed. The Keeper is attracted to light, so it's advised that a player turns their flashlight off if the entity is close. To escape, a player needs to complete two challenges. The first takes place outside, where the player needs to find two keys around the map to unlock the doors of the cathedral. The second part takes place inside, where you'll need to turn out all of the lights within the time limit. Failing to do so will mean the Keeper kills you and the level resets back to the beginning. But once the final light is turned out, a trapdoor will open in the apps, allowing you to complete the level. The sixth level of chapter 2 is set inside a neon arcade with clean white floors and fluorescent lighting common throughout. There are a couple of areas that you can explore here, from the escalators, to the bar area, and to the staff only room with displaced empty shelves. There are no entities on this level for the second time in the chapter, and so it's another level that you can explore and take your time on when trying to complete. To escape, you need to find the exit which is in the staff only room. It's essentially the opposite end of the map, with a large sign outside of the exit room which you can look out for while exploring. Turn right after the sign, and then turn left and walk through the red and white glowing portal to advance. Now when the final level before the finale, you find yourself working through an abandoned and run-down hospital. As you work your way through the level, you'll find cluttered hallways with beds and medical equipment knocked over, blocking your way. The level also has some variety in it, with vents and elevated gantries to explore depending on your ending. There is a record of four different entities on this level, however you'll need to experience both endings in order to come across them all. The Watcher is back again, and is present throughout the entirety of the level, guiding you through with clues and hints. However, some lines of dialogue lead you to believe that he may not be all that he says he is. In Ending 1, you will come across a Titan Smiler who was last seen back on level 10. It appears in a hallway after the colour spin task, and will chase you through the vent before eventually being cut off. In Ending 2, you will first come across the Phaser, who is a black figure with a glowing white head. It will chase you down the first hallway after the opening maze, where you can easily escape it by crawling into a vent. Later on, you will meet the Cruelist, who patrols the final gantry. It's another black creature with no lower body, and one large eye surrounded by eight smaller ones as its face. It's not known if it is blind, but when the entity is released from its cage to roam the level, do not move, since it's attracted to any sort of movement. To escape, you will need to complete one of the two endings. Ending 1 will have you completing a colour switch challenge, where you need to match three spinnable switches to the buttons at the end of the vent. After escaping the Titan Smiler, you need to navigate one final maze to find a hole to jump into. Ending 2 begins with you navigating a small maze before encountering the Phaser. Jumping into a vent at the end of the hallway will take you to the Cruelist's chamber. 
While the lights are on, you need to use the levers to align the two rectangles beneath you. If the lights turn off, do not move until the lights come back on, but once the blocks beneath you are parallel, you will jump off and get chased by the memory worm to take you to the train station and the finale. After a week of speculation, we were finally treated to at least part of Epirophobia's Chapter 2 finale. Level 24 takes place in an abandoned subway tunnel, with the level split up into numerous areas which need to be unlocked. Throughout the level, the texture of the walls change to match some of the levels you have previously covered. These include the wallpaper of level 0 and level 2, the tiled walls of level 1, and the red walls associated with level 6, among others. There is one entity on this level, and it's a debut for the Memory Worm, which featured prominently in a lot of the teasers leading up to this update. It's a gigantic creature which snakes its way through the level, and the only way to beat it is to outrun it. While the backrooms features a number of levels set around subways and metros, namely level 59 and 701, the chase sequence in Epirophobia is original, even if it takes the concept from level exclamation. To escape, you just need to run the full length of the level and jump into a hole at the end. It's essentially a repeat of level 6's run for your life, but along with obstacles, you have doors which need to be opened using the two switches at either side. After jumping into the hole, you'll be taken to the train station to conclude part 1 of the finale. That concludes all of the levels added in Chapter 2 of Epirophobia. For me, this was a mixed bag with some well thought out levels surrounded by a lot of filler. I'll be back with another video outlining the rest of Chapter 2's finale, plus any other levels and features that come with it. I hope this video helped you out when it came to understanding and completing these new levels. If it did, make sure to like the video and comment down below what your favourite level of the new chapter was. As always, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to never miss a future video. See ya!